In Chicago, you can find one of the world's greatest avenues, including some of the most upscale dining, shopping, as well as something for anybody, no matter your pocket or passion. I am, of course, referring to the famous Magnificent Mile in Chicago, everybody. Let's get into it. Located on Michigan Avenue, just north of the Chicago River, Magnificent Mile is practically downtown Chicago. It is within walking distance of famous areas such as the museums, Chicago River Walk, Millennium Park, and various other things that are located in the loop. Now make sure to stay to the end of the video because I will be going over the hidden gem of Magnificent Mile, the place people don't ever talk about or consider going if you really want to find true luxury and you know that magnificent feel that you would expect to see in the Magnificent Mile. After crossing the Chicago River, you will first be met with some stunning architecture in the area. You will notice that these are two sort of gatekeepers to the area, the Wrigley Building to the left, and the Tribune Tower to the right. Although their styles couldn't be more opposite, they are still both equally incredible and beautiful, and are going to really make a strong impression for when you enter the area. Located next to the Tribune Tower is the Intercontinental Hotel of Chicago, and you really need to check out the side of this building because it has incredible detail etched into it, looking almost like hieroglyphic sort of writing. Also, right by the Wrigley Building, there's a cool little plaza called the Plaza of Americas with some great nature and statues and just a really cool little historic feel to the area of the Magnificent Mile. From here on out, you can begin to explore a very diverse collection of storefronts. Some more bougie, some a little bit more of a, a working man sort of store, if you catch my drift. Some of the no notable ones are going to be places like Hugo Boss, Vans, Men's Warehouse, Uggs, Rolex. Already, as I'm starting to list these, you're starting to see, man, which one does one of those well men shop at? You can take your pick based on my attire. Either way, it's really cool to start to get acquainted with these different stores because these are only just a few. And one thing that they all share in common is they have a grandiose storefront, lots of detail, either a really big building or an interesting sort of architectural twist on it that makes it feel like it's not just your average TJ Maxx. Am I right? In addition to the exquisite storefronts, they really do a lot to add to decoration and feel of the area through things such as plants that are really green and blooming, beautiful flowers during the warmer months. Have to check it out. Lots of trees around the area, fountains, plazas, public spaces. All these little things give this strip of Chicago more feeling and more character and also just really add to its beauty. So I really enjoy checking these out. So you will love it hopefully as I do. Now, if you are a shopaholic, a window shopper, or you just like to aimlessly walk around these sorts of areas, either way, I'm sure you are bound to be starving or at least have somewhat of an appetite while walking around the area. First and foremost, I think you should check out Alfia. This is a really creative restaurant that's located really high up in the area, so you get great views of the surrounding area. So cool. I don't belong here. And the food is nothing to scoff at either. It's very fresh, it's very creative, very delicious, and pretty light. So if you don't want to feel like you just pounded through, a, a, uh, I don't know, a buffet at, uh, what's it called? So if you don't want to feel like you just pounded through a buffet at Golden Corral, this is a great place to get a really tasty bite to eat without feeling like a ton of bricks. Now, if you want to feel like a ton of bricks, but you want a Chicago experience, head to Gino's East to try the famous Chicago style deep dish pizza. It, this will definitely hit you like a ton of bricks. If you want something a little bit between the two, you can check out Cafe Cito, which is a bit of a Cuban cafe with some delicious Cuban cuisine. Whether you want some sandwiches, some fries, something to drink, or a combination of all, it's a really great place to sit and eat really closely located to the Magnificent Mile. All right, so once you're refueled, optional of course, there are many more great must-sees to see along the Magnificent Mile. First and foremost, you will see the Starbucks Reserve Roastery around this area, which is very fascinating. It is the most over-the-top uh, coffee shop. I wouldn't even call it a shop. It's more of like a 
Willy Wonka's Coffee Factory sort of thing. Check out my video up here if you want to see more about the area. I would highly recommend at least stopping by for a visit. Further down, you will see the really uh, distinct water tower place, which isn't massive, but it looks very out of place in this area. Really cool historical building. And really closely uh, located, you will see the water tower place shopping mall, which is one of my personal favorites. Once you go inside, make sure you visit JoJo's Shake Bar for again, another over the top delicacy, uh, one of their shakes. On the west side, you will see a massive Uniqlo and H&M, which are two, you know, not super, you know, luxurious brands, but really cool to check out these massive buildings and see their full collection. You can also see the very famous, very touristy 360 observation deck in Chicago, which you have to pay a little bit of a pretty penny to go up to the observatory platform and see some what have been rumored to be great views of the area. But either way, the building itself, the John Hancock Tower is really cool to see, very imposing, but fascinating to just sit there and stare up at it and imagine how long it would take for you to fall off if you were to jump off. No, don't do that. But either way, it's really cool to see and definitely one of the most notable architectural towers or just places in Chicago in general. So we have reached the end of the Magnificent Mile, but honestly, things have only just begun. Well, I wouldn't say they've just begun, but there are still some main things that you should definitely check out just a little bit outside of the Magnificent Mile. If you want a little bit of a green space, a little bit of a, less of a shopping feel, head to the park on Oak Street, which is quiet, it's quaint, so there's a little bit of a gazebo or uh, you know, just some green area to walk through, but it's really nice to just take a break from the city, in my opinion, and just walk around here. But most notably, you need to go a little bit under uh, the road that's in front of you to reach the Oak Street Beach, which is a really massive strip of sand. There's also plenty of volleyball courts if you want to get a little bit active and burn off some of that food that we just ate potentially earlier. And either way, there's lots of beach space, pretty blue water, and stunning views of the skyscrapers that are surrounding us that we just walked through in the Magnificent Mile, of course. All right, so now that you've made it to sort of the end of the video, I will let you in on that big secret that I promised at the beginning. Where are you gonna find the most insane luxury stores that you were promised to see in the Magnificent Mile? So the biggest secret is, I'm gonna let you guys in on it, They are not actually located on that Magnificent Mile, everybody. Sorry guys, rip up your tickets. You've been bamboozled. No! No! It's just a little bit a ways though. If you're on Magnificent Mile, so that's Michigan Avenue, and you just go about a block, within a block, west on streets such as Oak Street, Walton Street, Delaware Avenue, you will see the most bougie stores. You won't even recognize half of the brands. You'll probably feel like you're walking around Milan, Italy or something because, hey, your boy is the classiest one in Chicago and I didn't even recognize all of them. Probably only 1% to be honest. Either way, this is a really cool area to walk through and it doesn't feel anything like the Magnificent Mile. So insane stores, really bougie. Even if you can't afford anything or wouldn't even dare stepping inside any of them as Let's be real, that, that's the category I was in. It's definitely worth walking around and soaking in the magnificent stores, the beautiful views, and just feeling like for one day, you know what, you are a classy individual, just because you are belong in that area to some extent by walking around there. You can also find a really cool cupcake a uh, bakery called Sprinkles. They serve other things in addition to cupcakes, but what's most cool about this is they actually have a cupcake ATM. So you can just go to the outside of the store, put in your money, and then out comes, even better than money, cupcakes, guys. Really cool stuff, definitely have to check it out. So in a nutshell, that is the Magnificent Mile located in Chicago. Very famous and very touristy, but it's one of those things that you should definitely spend some time checking out because there's countless stores, countless restaurants, and is it everything that you would hope to dream and see in Chicago? Definitely not. There's a lot more that you can do in Chicago if you wanna check out some of these videos here. So many more neighborhoods, so many more different diverse feelings and vibes that you should definitely explore and get away from the touristy stuff. But some touristy stuff is touristy for a reason. So I hope you like the video, guys. Please let me know if you've been to the Magnificent Mile. Do you like any of these stores? Are any of my recognitions holding any water in your world? Is that even a saying? I really don't think it is. Either way, I love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Please leave the video a like if you liked it and hit subscribe for more Chicago, travel related, or just classy content as always, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Peace.